guys and welcome to the family fudge. Now I know you can probably tell that I love packing lunches and I have packed so many over the years. Toddler lunches, husband lunches, mom lunches, and of course school lunches. And I have to say school lunches are probably the toughest especially if you have picky eaters. There's quite a few things to consider when you're packing a school lunch, such as keeping certain foods hot, certain foods cold, and keeping the food fresh. So today I'm sharing five of my favorite lunchbox hacks. First up is hack number one, and that is to use cupcake liners to separate out compartments. Now I love using the bento style lunch boxes, but sometimes I need to divide the containers even more. So I like to use silicone muffin cups to do just that. These come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. These work really well for separating the food. It makes it really fun and colorful and it actually makes cleanup a lot easier. Now if you don't have silicone liners, paper cupcake liners also work really well and I really love to use these as well, especially if I'm making a themed or seasonal lunch. Another great way to use the liners is to make homemade Lunchables. I know a lot of kids love Lunchables, but if you try to pack it in the container like this, it's not gonna work out. When the kids get to school, it'll be a jumbled mess and the crackers, because they're touching the other foods, will be all soggy. You can basically take any lunch container, add a few of the silicone muffin cups, and create your own custom bento box. My next hack is all about how to keep food warm. I get this question all the time and I actually learned this the hard way. For my kids, I'm using a basic thermos. I found these on Amazon, link will be down below, but I've been using these for over a year and we love them. They've held up wonderfully, they don't leak, and they're easy to clean. Now you guys, the trick to keeping hot foods hot in a thermos is to preheat the thermos itself. Now I know that sounds weird, it's not like you can pop it in the microwave. To preheat the thermos, you need some boiling hot water. And the perfect time to preheat your thermoses is while your food is cooking. So I fill each thermos to capacity with the boiling hot water and then I quickly screw the lid on tight. And this water will actually just hang out in there until I'm ready to fill the thermoses. So I dump out the water and then I very quickly add in my food. Today I'm adding mac and cheese, one of my kids' favorite hot foods for lunch. And when I put it in the thermos, I like to add a little bit extra liquid. And I really feel like that's a good way to keep hot foods hot in a thermos, is to make sure it's a food with a sauce. Something like meatballs, soup, noodles, those foods will actually stay hot longer in your thermos versus things like chicken nuggets and grilled cheese and things that are really dry. So when I'm ready to add the food, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly dump the hot water out and then as quick as I can, get that hot food in there. To make it not so messy, I like to use my little funnel meant for canning and then I will very quickly get the lid on to trap all of that heat inside. Next up, I'm talking about apples, specifically how to send them to school sliced without them turning brown. Now you've probably heard of the lemon juice trick, but for some kids, sprinkling lemon juice on an apple makes it so sour they don't wanna eat it. So I'm gonna take my apple, and then I'm going to use my apple core to remove the core. Now while I'm doing this, I actually keep a little container with lemon juice and water right next to my workstation. The lemon juice is gonna help the apple not turn brown as quickly, but the water is going to make it so they won't be so sour when the kids go to eat them. You could also do a mixture of lemon juice and orange juice. Next, I'm gonna take the rest of my apple and very carefully slice it. I'm gonna pop these directly into our lemon water mixture. Then the fun part, I'm going to reassemble my apple. It can be a little bit tricky, but not too bad. Next, I'm going to take the apple core and stick it right back into the apple. It's actually gonna help keep the apple together. Next, I'm going to take the entire apple and wrap it as tightly as I can in a little bit of plastic wrap, and I'm gonna twist that closed. This is gonna keep the apple super fresh and it's not gonna turn brown so quickly. Next up, we're talking about freezer packs. Now, you probably know all of the traditional options for freezer packs, but sometimes those don't make it back home do they? 
So instead, what you can do is actually freeze the food itself and use that as your ice pack. Things like yogurt tubes and juice pouches are perfect for this. You throw them into the lunchbox and they'll be defrosted by lunchtime. But did you also know that things like applesauce are really great frozen too? And if it's not all the way defrosted by lunchtime, it's going to make a yummy slushy type snack. It'll be really tasty. Now if you're worried about your item melting and getting everything else wet, just go ahead and take it and wrap it up in a paper towel, kind of like a present, and place it into your box. This next hack I got from my friend Kimmy over at the channel She's in Her Apron. I'll go ahead and link her video down below if you want to check it out. This is a way to help keep your sandwiches from getting soggy and it's a great way if you want to pre-make and freeze your sandwiches. For a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I start with two pieces of bread, then I add a thin layer of peanut butter to both sides. That part is important. Next, I'm going to add my jam to the center of one of the pieces. And now I'm going to make my own Uncrustable. My kids love Uncrustables, but they can get kind of pricey. It's definitely cheaper to make your own. I found this Wonder Bread sandwich maker on Amazon, and of course I'll go ahead and link it down below if you're curious. But this cutter actually helps to take the crust off, and it will also seal the bread together. The trick to this is to make sure that you have bread that's big enough to fit the cutter and that you don't fill the sandwich too full. You pile on the sandwich toppings, it doesn't really work as well. Now if you want to make a meat and cheese sandwich, I like to start with the bread, Next, I'll add my layer of meat. Then I add my condiments. So mayonnaise, mustard will go in the center. It's not gonna touch the bread directly and that's gonna keep it from getting all soggy. So a little bit of mayo, a little bit of mustard right to the center. I'm gonna top that with cheese and then one more piece of turkey and close up the sandwich. I'm gonna go ahead and use my sandwich sealer just like I did with the peanut butter and jelly. It's such a time saver to make up a bunch of these and get them in the freezer. These sandwiches will be perfectly defrosted by lunchtime. My kids are big fans. If you have any lunchbox tips to share with us, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.